Welcome everyone. Welcome back to another Spline live stream. I am your host, Georgina Yabois, and today we're going to be looking at sequential transitions in Spline. We're really looking forward to demoing how you can use sequential transitions uh, in your Spline projects. Really looking forward to demoing that for you today. Now, without further ado, let's get on with the demo. We are featuring this wonderful scene that is using sequential transitions. Now, this is a new feature that was released uh, last week, and it basically has reprogrammed the entire state system that you were familiar with before in Spline. So I'm just gonna go into the play mode, and you can see here that each object on this plane here is being simulated by a sequential transition of states. Now we are going to dive in and look at each object here uh, and how they are being animated with sequential transitions. Okay, so we're gonna go one by one with each object here. I've hidden the other objects just for uh, clarification uh, so we can focus on each object at a time um, throughout this demo. So we're gonna start off with the cylinder here going down and up. All right, so you can see here that we have our states um, already assigned to the cylinder where the base state is where it is already up at its normal position and the second state it goes oops let's go back it goes down and this is all starting with the start event so now when I click into the start event you're going to notice a little bit of a difference so instead of um, having base state go to state you see that we have like this new panel here um, highlighting transitions and it goes from one base state to two states. Very uh, normal, right? Duration here has been, uh, it doesn't say duration anymore, it's just a timestamp of how long the transition will occur within ease and in and out uh, transition. And if you go into sequence um, down here, you can see that we have a delay where we are going to repeat the sequence at the end and it goes in an infinite loop with a ping pong cycle. Now with the ping pong cycle, what that means is that it's going to reverse the sequence. If I disable it and go into play mode, you can see that base one goes to base two, there's a delay but it starts at base one all over again. So if I go back to cycle and uh, select the ping pong, you can see that it will go from base one to two, have a delay and then go um, back to base one again, but in reverse. So it's starting from uh, state to base state, if that makes sense. So that's um, how that is going now. Here is the exciting part where we have been waiting for a long time so that we can have more than two states um, to complete a transition. So revealing um, the next object in our scene, we have this sphere here, not going from just two states, but four states entirely. So I'm just going to demonstrate what each state looks like right now here. We start at the base state where this is the initial position. Now just look carefully when I go to the next state here, we have not only just a new movement position, um, when you uh, create this state, but you also have a slight rotation of 180 degrees. So again, base state works at a normal uh, rotation starting at zero, and then not only do we move the position, but we also have a change in rotation as well to formulate the idea that this ball is going to be rolling. Um, and now going on to state two, again, new position, uh, different rotation, new position, different rotation. And then finally, we have state four, which is exactly the same as base state. So now when we go into events, we go into the transition, you can see that you can lay out your states uh, in the sequence that you want this transition to happen instead of it going just from one state, starting at base state, to a second state, and then nothing happening at the third state. So now you can have all your states aligned like this in the sequence that you prefer. We do not have a delay repetition here. It's just going on an infinite loop. There will be no ping pong cycle because it's not reversing. It's just 
going in an infinite loop all the way from state four to uh, base state and back again. So once I play that, you see that it's going through all of those five states infinitely. And again, it's starting at the start event, so it's going to be starting as soon as possible. Uh, so that was a really exciting moment for me when I first saw that, that we can now add as many states as we want to create that sequential transition. Now, moving on to this one here, our third animation. It uh, has three states, but what's interesting about this particular one is that not only can you uh, uh, not only can you formulate a sequence, you can also change durations between sequence transitions. So between base state and state, you have a duration of 150, but going from the second to third state here, you can change duration to go as slow or as fast as you want. So I'm going to demonstrate that uh, real quickly for you here where you can see normal duration and then zip zip really fast. And because we set our sequence to a ping pong cycle, it's gonna reverse back from state two to base state very easily, as so. All right, now revealing animation four. I think this one was almost my favorite animation. Uh, I'm going to reveal my favorite uh, transition uh, towards the end of the demo, but what my favorite one, uh, my second favorite one with this fourth animation here is where we have uh, this sphere not only going through four different transitions, but between these two, the size increases as well. So there's a lot of fun stuff that you can do here between states where you can create um, smooth sequential transitions where you not only change the position, rotation, but you can change the scaling as well. And the color where we have it go back here into its miniature size with a color change. So let's see how that's uh, working here. Uh, so we also have a different uh, duration um, between sequences. And what's very interesting about this one is remember when I mentioned before that we had base state and state four being exactly um, the same at the same position. Well, with this sphere here, the base state is once again called into the sequence to emulate that exact same state at the end to create that infinite loop. So not only can you have more than two state transitions going into uh, a sequential transition of your liking, you can also reuse states as well, and it will go back within that sequence. So instead of just having a single named state, you can actually refer back to a state you've already used in your sequence, and it will work just as fine. So I'm going to demonstrate that to you right now, where we have the ball increase in size along the grid here, and then it goes back to base state in the infinite loop that is added here. So it will save you a lot of time creating states if you want to uh, emulate the same state again, but you don't have to actually uh, add it into your state sequence bar. You can just call it again in your transitions tab instead. Now to reveal my favorite animation transition in this entire scene is this little um, ellipse here that has a hole in it. And I'm going to show you why it's possibly my favorite one in this scene. It's because when you go between the states, you can actually uh, prolong this sequential transition by simply having a state at the same state. Uh, before it goes to the next transition, which I thought was really interesting. So if I go back into play mode and it just goes back to this state, it stays there and then it goes back to base state, which I thought was really interesting. And you notice how it quickly goes back to 
the next date in this transition. That's because we have sped up the duration between the uh, second and third state, which is the exact same state. So going there, it's going to be really uh, slow, but then going back is gonna be super, super fast. So I thought that was um, insanely interesting to uh, experience as well. So that's all the transitions uh, uh, created in this scene very fast, super easy, and it also makes creating sequential transitions in spline a lot more easier. You can also apply the same logic with conditional logic as well. So if you uh, create a conditional logic event, you can now have your sequential events uh, follow that logic where an object has done its transition and then you can have another object with states um, continue its transition as well. And it's an amazing uh, chain. Very, very intuitive, very simple. And I was really happy to see it when it came out last week. Thank you all so much for your time, for coming out. Again, I apologize for my voice. It was, it really just came out of the blue. <laughs> so thank you so much for, for joining me today. I really appreciate it. All right. Bye.